Nathaniel West's novel Miss Lonely Hearts 1933 follows a jaded newspaper reporter who runs the Lonely Hearts column, and finds himself tormented by the painful letters he receives. One of West's most popular novels, the book received overwhelmingly positive reviews. Critics praise it for its blend of expressionism, distortion, and humor. West was a distinguished 20th century American author. He was born Jewish, but he changed his name. He died in a car crash one day after his best friend, the novelist F. Scott Fitzgerald, passed away. The unnamed protagonist works as a newspaper columnist in New York City. He works under the name Miss Lonely Hearts because he gives advice to broken-hearted people. The column receives around 30 letters every day. No one takes his job seriously, least of all his editor, Shrike. One day, Shrike jokingly compares Miss Lonely Hearts to Jesus because he spends all day pretending to care about people. Miss Lonely Hearts does not find this funny, he does care about the anonymous people who write to him. He takes his nickname, Jesus, very seriously. He likes to think that he is a prophet. Nursing lonely and broken hearts across New York City finally takes its toll on the reporter when three very tragic letters cross his desk. They make him forget what it is like to report on happy things. There are so many depressed and desperate people out there. Shrike finds the whole thing amusing because Miss Lonely Hearts takes his job too seriously. After their shift one day, Shrike takes Miss Lonely Hearts out for beers. Shrike pokes fun at some of the recent letters. For example, one 86-year-old man plans to teach himself Chinese. Shrike laughs because the man won't live long enough to reach his goal. Miss Lonely Hearts says that Shrike only mocks people because he is insecure about his own abilities. Shrike claims that he is not disillusioned or incompetent, he's honest. Miss Lonely Hearts remembers recent writers. He talks about a woman who hates her husband's high sex drive and the family tormented by religion. He also talks about a father who shuns his daughter because she is disfigured, and a young girl who ends up pregnant after a man rapes her. There is nothing funny about any of these letters, Miss Lonely Hearts leaves the bar feeling worse than ever. The next day, Miss Lonely Hearts visits his new fiance, Betty. He proposed to her two months ago and he has not visited her since. It is unclear why he bothered proposing because they don't fancy each other. Betty eventually sends him away, and he plans to drown his sorrows. Luckily, his friends invite him to a local speakeasy, and he heads there. When Miss Lonely Hearts arrives, he interrupts a conversation between his friends. They are talking about how women often deserve rape because it keeps them submissive. Rape reminds women that they are not equal to men. Thinking this is preposterous, Miss Lonely Hearts tells his friends they are wrong. They complain, saying that writing the column isn't good for him. Miss Lonely Hearts cannot believe these people are his friends. The next day, a miserable married woman writes to Miss Lonely Hearts. Her husband is disabled, and he doesn't satisfy her sexually. She asks Miss Lonely Hearts what she should do. Miss Lonely Hearts eventually meets her, and they have sex. He doesn't feel good about it because she is married and depressed. He feels that he took advantage of her, even though she claims otherwise. He vows never to do this again. Later, Betty comes over. She notices that he is tired and he looks guilty about something. He blames his exhausting day job. She says that, if working on the column makes him feel so sick, he should quit. He doesn't tell Betty about sleeping with another woman because it will only hurt her feelings. Shrike visits and Betty leaves. Shrike tells Miss Lonely Hearts to stop moping around. Miss Lonely Hearts complains because life seems so hopeless. Everyone is miserable. Shrike tells him to join a monastery or worship God if all he wants is hope and joy. Real life is painful and often disappointing. Miss Lonely Hearts knows that Shrike is right. Everything gets worse when the disabled man writes to Miss Lonely Hearts. He wants advice because his wife doesn't love him anymore. He invites Miss Lonely Hearts to his home. When he arrives, the man's wife is there. They pretend they do not know each other, because Miss Lonely Hearts refuses to admit he slept with her. Miss Lonely Hearts counsels them both and they make up before he leaves. Miss Lonely Hearts visits Betty. He says that they should marry soon. He plans to quit his job because he wants a new life. 
Betty says this is a great idea because, although she didn't tell Miss Lonely Hearts earlier, she is pregnant. Miss Lonely Hearts appraises God for this news, and he takes it as a sign that leaving the column is the right thing to do. I hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe thank you.